Ever since Scar, and Renius had their hundredth birthday, Peter Sam had been worried. He kept on saying the real Duke never came. Rubbish, said Duncan. Of course he was real. All the same, Peter Sam persisted, he wasn't our Duke. Our Duke, said Sir Handel, is an engine. You're as bad as he is. All engine Dukes were scrapped. Ask Duck. Duck doesn't know everything, Starlowy put in quietly. Tell us about him, you two. Here is one of the stories that Peter Sam and Sir Handel told about Grandpuff. It happened when Sir Handel was new to the line. Now, have you remembered that in those days he was called Falcon and painted blue? You have. Now we can begin. The manager came to see him one day and said he was pleased with his work so far. Now, Falcon, he went on, you must learn the mountain road. Yes, please, sir, said Falcon, excited. So tomorrow you shall go double-heading on it with Duke. He'll explain everything. Falcon didn't like this. He thought Duke was a fusspot and a regular old fuddy-duddy. Duke's train was one for holiday-makers. He called it the picnic. Falcon was ready when Duke arrived. Duke drew forward beside him. Listen, he said. The mountain road is difficult. You take the train, and I'll couple in front. No, said Falcon. I'll lead. How can I learn the road with you lumbering ahead, blocking the view? Suit yourself, said Duke shortly, but never mind the view. Attend to the track. Look at the track, he puffed again, starting. Never mind the view. Puss pot, puss pot. Puffed Falcon, while starting. Fuddy duddy, fuddy duddy, fuddy duddy. slower and slower. Don't dawdle, don't dawdle, urged Falcon. No hurry, no hurry, puffed Duke stolidly. The tunnel was curved and pitch dark. Falcon felt stifled. He wanted to get out. Watch the track, watch the track, warned Duke. Puss pot, puss pot, scoffed Falcon. mouth grew larger and larger, so at last they burst into the sunshine. In their coaches had barely cleared the tunnel when Falcon lurched. His front wheel was derailed, crunched over sleepers and ballast. He came to rest with one wheel uncomfortably near the edge. Duke had saved Falcon. Now he held on grimly with locked wheels and taut couplings. Young idiot, he hissed, stop it! I can't hold you if you shake. Falcon tried hard to stop shuddering. Quickly, Duke's driver and fireman chopped his wheels and strengthened the coupling between the two engines. Thank you, said Duke. Now I'll manage. With Duke secure, the two crews, helped by a plate layer, propped up Falcon's front end. They were looking forward to a rest when Duke began to squeeze him in an alarming way. His fireman ran to his cab. Water, he cried. We want water, quickly. The plate layer's cottage stood nearby. He explained to his wife and the passengers borrowed jugs, buckets, kettles, saucepans, anything, in fact, which would hold water. They formed a chain from the wells of the engine and passed them from hand to hand. The farmer, meanwhile, reduced his fire and anxiously watched the gauge. 
It was hot and tiring work, for Duke needed many gallons. But at last the farmer shouted cheerfully, We're winning! Don't weaken! They cheered again when the breakdown gang arrived. <laughs> The manager was at the top station. He said he was sorry about the accident and thanked the passengers for their help. Not at all, they said. We admired the way you put things right and enjoyed the adventure. They thanked Duke and his crew for preventing a nasty accident. Your Duke, they said, is a hero. He stood firm like a bulldog and just wouldn't let go. Falcon said thank you too. I don't know why you bothered after I'd been so rude. Ah, oh, well, replied Duke. You just had a new coat of paint. It would have been a pity if you rolled down the mountain and spoilt it. That would never have suited his grace. <laughs> <laughs>